let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. The new adventure suspense fiction for a woman by Dick Snyder traces the efforts of two high school classmates, Bobby Banfield and Trey Thaxton, to rejuvenate the performing career of another, Chantel Williams. They are white, she is black. Now, financing is difficult, accessing the mob is helpful, but easy money becomes a hard coin to swallow. They persist motivated by love and a lust of power. And in the journey to power in the mob, Thaxton becomes Chantel's lover and producer. Banfield enjoys the power that he's received by joining up with the mob. Dick Snyder is a graduate of Taft College, completed his B.S. University of the Colorado, a Ph.D. in history. He wrote professional articles and edited a collection of essays on John F. Kennedy. Retired as chair, Department of History and Emeritus Professor, University of Wisconsin, La Crosse in 2001. Returned to California in 2003. After retirement, he published two e-books. He followed those with an autobiography, Boomerang, in 2015. He became interested in writing mystery, published a collection of short stories, The Jonas Kirk Mysteries, in 2017. Subsequently, he published three Jonas Kirk novellas, Bingo, Pumpkin, Pumpkin Fest, and Marquee Murders. He then explored the dark side of university collegiality, Why She Wept, written in 2021, features faculty enmity, academic rivalries, transgender revelations, and ultimately a death for which three persons each believe themselves responsible. And brand new from the pen of Dick Snyder for a woman, and he's our guest on This Week in America. Dick, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much. You have written so much, especially in in the later years. Talk about what kind of writer are you? Because in fact, during your career, you've done all different types of writing. How do you describe yourself as a writer? Well, I like to think of myself as a storyteller. Um, I like to tell stories. Everyone in my family seems to like to tell stories. And for a, for a very long time, uh, professionally speaking, if you wanted to tell a story about something in history, a personality, an event, uh, an era, there are a lot of constraints that come with um, efforts to write history, but there are virtually no limits when it comes to writing fiction. <laughs> and a fiction, it just appealed to me, especially at that time in my life where uh, I was really kind of looking for something to do. And I picked up on a thread that my sister suggested about our family, uh, because, of course, we have a story about that. And then uh, having done that, I, I just enjoyed writing. And, um, and I have to say, in case I don't say it somewhere else, uh, my wife, Linda, has just been remarkably uh, helpful in this uh, because I live in a quiet, loving, supportive environment. So writing is something that I can take pleasure in. I'm not denying anyone else anything. And I'm treating myself uh, to some nice creative juices. You know, you really do a job with mystery. Does that come easy for you? The, I'm going to mention Jonas Kirk here in, the, in a second. Then the, the book we're focused on today, For a Woman. Mysteries seem to be that's something special for you. Are you comfor- most comfortable writing mysteries? I am because it, I just, I've just always found it appealing uh, to take a look at what I will call ordinary people. Uh, living in ordinary times and in ordinary occupations who get caught up in their own emotional baggage or their wish list or their frustrations and act out in ways that ultimately seem quite natural to them, but for the reader uh, might come as a surprise. I, I like thinking about people. I like kind of characterizing their personalities. And then, of course, to put it in a story so so that I hopefully intrigue the reader early on uh, and the reader follows. And then I get the really the pleasure of of trying to construct an end that will make everyone feel pretty good. Well, you do an excellent job at that. Our guest is Dick Snyder on the program. The newest book for a woman, we're, we're talking about his writing career, philosophy as a writer, his talents as a writer. Jonas Kirk, he's been featured in like a dozen different short stories, three novellas. Talk about developing this character and then staying with it for an extended period. 
Well, I, I wanted to write um, fiction. I wanted to I wanted to write something about uh, an ordinary person getting caught up in mystery or uh, homicide or uh, helping to solve the police. Something probably akin to what one might see on typical television programs. Um, and of course, good advice always to people is write what you know. And I thought I knew myself pretty well. So I took, I took the character Jonas Kirk, uh, named him after uh, one of my uh, nephews, Jonas. And uh, I just tried to put him into what I would believe uh, he would find comfortable as an environment. I, He's a, he's a relatively young man, perhaps 28 or 30, who's wealthy. Uh, his parents have been killed in an accident. He's inherited. And he's sort of wandering around on the edges of uh, legitimacy. And he just gets caught up in the idea of solving homicide. Picks up with a detective uh, who is sort of irascible and difficult. But they find some kind of meeting of the minds. And um, after writing that first a mystery novel whose title is Click. Um, I, I just, I still enjoyed Jonas Kirk. And then, to my surprise, uh, in the writing of that book and the one that came after, I began to create other characters in order to make the story uh, balanced and meaningful and thoughtful. Yes. And I began to come across characters that I didn't want to let go of, <laughs> just like I had. I didn't want to let go of them. One of them was Sharon Cunningham. And uh, I just really fell in love with the character of Sharon Cunningham. And so uh, I featured her in uh, two or three stories in which she gradually, through the series, becomes both co-equal with Jonas Kirk and eventually becomes his lover. And so they have um, a relationship that I would describe as modern, uh, in in that uh, her weight uh, is equal to everything that he pulls, and she has insights sometimes that um, contradict his, and sometimes she's right and he's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why people like Jonas Kirk. Why that res that character resonates, and it's interesting. You get to a point, and I often think an author has created these characters. These are his creation. This is his world. It has to be difficult to walk away from them. And in some cases, it sounds like for you, that was exactly the case. You tried to keep your, your characters, keep them alive. I did. Um, I, I, I finally got tired of Jonas Kirk uh, along about um, somewhere uh, going through Pumpkin Fest. Um, and I, and I, in the last book or novella that I wrote about him, even as I was writing, I, I recognized that I'd really kind of run out of storyline for Jonas. I mean, he and Sharon Cunningham are together, and, this, and, the, and the last issue that they have to deal with, he realizes somehow toward the end that he's made a mistake. And so that gave me the opportunity to, to send him off to the Pacific uh, looking, for, <laughs> looking for a murderess uh, who has taken residence in a, a country uh, for which we do not have extradition. So they're wandering out there. If I want to bring them back, I can. But uh, I didn't want to. A and to tell you the truth, Rick, I, I wasn't sure I was going to write any more at all. And then, and academics will tell you this, if you give them a drink or two. <laughs> and then I got to thinking about some of the people who really upset me when I was working at the university. Uh, and and I began to think about one in particular, and I began to think, I I think I'll write a book about that. And so uh, that is uh, that is the, the, the source of the uh, novella, Why She Wept, uh, that took me back to the university and gave me a chance to, uh, to create a mystery, which I really enjoyed, and to, in fiction, skewer certain personalities who were quite objectionable to me while I was in the, the university. The power of the pen or the computer, right. the I, computer in this case. And by the way, Jonas Kirk will live on forever as your website. Dick Snyder is our guest on the program. This book we're talking, and we'll get to here in a second, For a Woman, so many interesting books that he's written. The uh, the Jonas Kirk series and his website is jonaskirk, K-A-R-K dot com. 
Books are available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all of the, the usual places. So you've changed from this detective to two recent novellas, The Why She Wept, you just mentioned, and For a Woman. Why She Wept, you just gave me a little bit of background on that. Why did she weep and who is she? Well, I, I won't tell you who she is because oh. that is part of the <laughs> mystery of the whole book. But I but I will tell you that uh, the person who is the victim in this uh, murder mystery uh, is uh, modeled after a person that I knew in my time at the university. And um, I have <clears throat> and exaggerated her challenges in life. I've made her uh, a person who, whom you might you know, come to uh, feel a certain empathy toward. She has a lot of handicaps and a lot of challenges. And I recognize the, uh, the legitimacy that she has in working through those and still attempting to make some changes in the college. Uh, and making changes in the college brings up the most terrible word you can say to a university person, and that is change. They don't like change. Uh, they generally have worked it out for themselves after hmm, five to ten years what their position is going to be and how they're going to go about it. Someone who introduces change and actually tries to make change is a threat to everything. And so uh, this particular dean uh, shows up dead one day and three different people believe they killed her. You've captured my, my, my thinking process here as to what's going on with that. You've got my attention, and that book is available with uh, so many books at, uh, at Dick's website. That's, the, that's where this book came from, Why She Wept. Let's now talk about this new book, For a Woman. I mentioned the background on this. It's fascinating. You've got a little bit of everything there. It's always great to have the mob connection in there because there's so many interesting elements you can bring in with that. What made it, motivated you to write for a woman? Um, really, um, it, it came about as a consequence of a close friend of mine who had read Why She Wept. And he thought that it was something that deserved some kind of uh, television or film treatment. Uh, and he started talking about making a movie. Uh, that wasn't going to be possible. But nonetheless, we both got interested in doing something with that storyline. And then, sort of out of the blue, as my son likes to say, <laughs> I got a pamphlet from the wife of another high school friend of mine. And her pamphlet had to deal with her family. It had been written by two uh, members of the family, her father and his brother. And I'm going to give you two names here just to help fix where you might be. Her father's name, as he was known in the family, was Tricky Dick. Her uncle's name was Perfect Ted. They came. From, this is true. They came from a family of seven children who lost their parents within 18 months, and were put up with relatives in Texas um, to raise them. Now, Perfect Ted and Tricky Dick, as I, as I say, they were too poor, uh, and they needed money, and so they did what people often did back in the 1930s. They robbed banks, they moved illegal hooch, uh, they, uh, they did whatever they could to earn a dollar, and they were good at it. So my friend's wife wanted to know more about them. And she gave me the number of a cousin whose name in the book is Arlo. And uh, I called Arlo. And uh, from the get-go, he, he was perfectly willing to tell me all that I wanted to ask about his uncle and his father, their connection to the mob, and reached out as far as uh, Jack Ruby. Uh, he was very candid. He worked for the mob himself for many, many years. Said he'd recently retired. I'm always skeptical that anyone retires from the mob. Oh, yes. But uh, nonetheless, he gave me stories to tell. And so there I had, uh, I had my high school friend who wanted to make a movie. I had the wife of a high school friend who wanted to have a biography of her family. And I had me 
uh, interested in doing something uh, with putting this together. So I tried to I tried to blend the three storylines, and um, in the in the course of doing that, I both my friend here and I agreed we needed a, another character, and uh, we needed someone who was black, and we wanted someone like Chantel Williams, and so. I um, I created Chantel and created a couple of other characters and uh, and and then just went for it. There are so many elements to this, and you do such a, a, a wonderful job of of like meshing these all together. Did you know where you were going to go? Do you have a, like a a script in the beginning, an outline, a strict outline, or did the story sort of go off in different directions as you were telling it? Um. This may be hard to believe. I wrote the last chapter first because uh, interesting. I, I wanted, I knew where I wanted it to all end up. Uh, and then I started writing uh, from the beginning, uh, creating a path wherein um, the uh, family that was connected to the mob in a kind of a dramatic appearance. And then I decided that I was going to write it in the first person. And that meant Bobby Banfield would be me, my uh, fictional identity. And as the book progressed, um, I think what I, <clears throat> what I tried to do was to make it clear that this search for a woman, what to do for a woman, turned out to be the renewal of a love affair between one character, Trey, and um, Chantel. And for me, Bobby Banfield, it turned out to be a small metamorphosis into a shadow gangster, becoming a good friend of Arlo, learning how to access money, how to uh, guide the three of them in an effort to rejuvenate Chantel's uh, career. And by the end, by the end of that last chapter, um, I was able to define the roles that each of them played in this in a much better way. And in the course of writing, I uh, came to realize <laughs> that what I was really telling was a love story, a love story between Chantel and Trey. And that love story sort of ebbs and flows, but it never quite disappears. And then it becomes a... Um, what I would like to think of as a climactic part of the last chapter. The book is for a woman. The author is our guest, Dick Snyder. His website is jonaskirk.com. The uh, book available, of course, at Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all of the, uh, all of the usual places. Let's talk a little bit about in, in writing this story. You mentioned before, this is, you've got a lot of mob influence in there. Can you ever leave the mob? Do you ever retire from the mob? I, I've heard it told both ways. Well, I don't know if you can, but my source, Arlo, in the story, the, the real life person, told me uh, that he left the business uh, in 2017. But then he shortly after uh, became a manager of a series of what they call them gentlemen clubs, strip, strip joints, yes. uh, throughout Texas and into uh, New Mexico and Nevada. And he manages those for a large corporation on the East Coast. And so uh, uh, you, ev anyone can make their guess as to who, <laughs> who's in that large corporation. Well, the, but yes. I, but he, I do have to say he was really candid. I mean, if I asked him anything, he'd tell me. That's just, uh, that's amazing. And all of this, it comes to life in Dick's book, For a Woman, book available, of course, where wherever books are sold. A couple minutes left, time is going by too quickly. How would you describe what you want to expect the reader to experience? What uh, what emotions do you want us to go through as we're reading For a Woman? I, I, I hope the reader ex experiences, first of all, the plight in which this family the Bullocks, I think they're named in the book, the plight from which they emerged and how and how Tricky Dick and Perfect Ted made their way in the mob. I, I just think that's an interesting story. Secondly, I want the reader to come to accept and uh, follow uh, the personality of Chantel Williams, whom, whom I write as a free-spirited, smart, 
woman looking for an entertainment success and one who is unburdened with a lot of the conventions that have uh, shrouded women's uh, freedom of expression over the years. So I hope they see Chantel emerging. And finally, uh, Bobby, uh, Bobby Banfield makes a conversion. I mean, he becomes a member of the mob. And uh, in doing that, he, he pretty much departs uh, completely from the life he led as a university professor. It's a fascinating story, and that it all comes to life in For a Woman by Dick Snyder. What are you, what are you working on now? I'm, I'm sure you've got several ideas, yeah. if, if not something already started in the computer, things you're working on. I'm going to make a, a departure, and just briefly, Rick, if, if, if your listeners go to JonasKirk.com, you'll see right away pictures of the characters that are in this oh, book, yes, For a Woman. Yes. And uh, there is one picture which is real. It's a picture of uh, uh, Perfect Ted sitting at a table with uh, five other mobsters. And if you read that account of what, what he thought, and why he did what he did, it's true. That is something that his nephew gave to me to use. Now, back to your question. What was your question? Well, what are you working on now? Oh, uh, you know, to tell you the truth, I'm not. Um, in, a, I, in a way that is surprising to me. Um, I'm 85. I uh, pretty much ran out of energy with For a Woman. And the idea of sitting down and writing, I've, I've gone to the trouble of making an outline uh, of, a, of a story that, that I think would be fun to write. But I just don't have the energy to sit down and do, you know, two, three, four hours of writing anymore. So if I, uh, if I have some kind of reconstitution of my spirit <laughs> in the next few months, I'll try again. But I've had a really good run at this. Um, I've enjoyed yes, learning have. about publications, and I've enjoyed feedback. And most of all, I've enjoyed the writing. And these are not simple. I mean, Dick does an excellent job of creating a world we want to escape in, and we can sort of visualize these pictures and I'm, I'm the, the characters, and I'm glad you mentioned that on the website. We all have ideas as we're reading a book what the characters look like. You've got that there. You've got uh, the real person that, uh, that Dick mentioned. But it has to be exhaustive coming up with all of these different storylines, story fitting them together. And hopefully there's a second win so we can enjoy a new <laughs> book. But we'll enjoy what you have out there all of the books available at uh, jonaskirk.com and uh, you've got that link on our website this week in america.us dick it's been a pleasure having you on the program thank you so much for joining us excellent job with uh with all of the books the specific book we're talking about today for a woman thank you for joining us on the program excellent job and uh, hopefully we can continue this conversation thank you thank you rick it has been our pleasure. Dick Snyder, the guest on the program and the author of For a Woman. Many other books, you'll find them all listed at jonaskirk.com, his website, Kirk, K-I-R-K. You'll find uh, all the information, of course, on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. My thanks to blueinkscribble.com for arranging a conversation with Dick on today's program. And by the way, if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you'll have a direct link to Jonas Kirk. That's Dick's website. And get all the information on all of his books there as well. You're listening to This Week in America, and we're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.